Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's biggest stars, some of my favourite people, and people who have changed the world with music. There is no question that Silence is Golden is probably one of the greatest top 50 songs ever written and performed, and the man behind the drums on it was Dave Munden from The Trebolos. How are you? I'm fine, thanks, Alex. That's a lovely compliment. Thank you very much indeed. That's brilliant. Do you know, I'm a guy on radio who loves music, and there are certain songs, like Come On Eileen, for example, that you would play and you know you're going to get the party crowd in, or yes. Silence is Golden. What's the recipe for getting a number one song that's currently got 1.5 million hits on uh, YouTube for Silence is Golden? Uh, I don't know. I, I suppose it's the way we performed it. We did it a bit different from the original because the original was obviously the B-side of Ragdoll from, from Four Seasons. We heard that and we thought, we, we we didn't, unbeknown to us, our lead guitarist then, Ricky Westwood, had a freak falsetto voice. We thought we'll record that and Rick can do it. Go in the studio, put the, the lead vocals on it and we did all the harmonies and it worked out wonderfully well for us and it's probably our biggest ever track which we're in, we're, we're very grateful to the Four Seasons for it. Do you know, it's almost unthinkable that Bob Gordio isn't a household name. When you look at what he's written, he's stunning, isn't he? Yes. Unfortunately, I don't know if you know that his partner, Bob Crew, he died about two weeks ago. I the didn't know partners. that. I'm yeah. so sorry. Yeah. I got to meet him and Frankie in Las Vegas at the opening of Jersey Boys, and I just oh, felt really? like I was in the presence of utter genius. There are so few people who, who touch our lives with music, and those two are yeah. certainly two of them. Wonderful, yeah, I, I agree with that. In actual fact, I'd just like to... S- Plug the actual album Silence is Golden. It's actually a three three compilation album. It's got sixty tracks on it, and it's a fabulous. I mean, there's there's things like the Trogs are on it, Chris Farlow, Out of Time, Black Magic Woman. There's so many good tracks on it. It's, it's really worth, and it's out this week, so everyone's got to buy it. It's fabulous, you know. I did Capital Gold in 2006, 2007, and it basically was my year summed up in three discs, this CD. It's fabulous. It's every song you ever wanted from The Zombies, She's Not There. But of course, track one, CD one, is The Tremolos and Silence is Golden. So why are you so special then? Why is this clearly the best track on this 3D set? Um, I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm just a very lucky guy, and I'm still I'm still around to tell the tale at seventy. You know. <laughs> well, congratulations, because so many aren't. I want to talk about you and your life. We're going to get to that in a minute, but I just want to talk about the sound of the tremolos because I was just listening to um, "Here Comes My Baby." Two point five million hits on YouTube. That's got, and the wow. drums are such a big part of it. How has it sort of changed between sixties and now? Because that drum sound really was the backbone of the band wasn't it i suppose it was those days yeah i was a very simple drummer i still am and it was just basically keeping keeping a rhythm going and of, of course we used to we used to have a party in the studio i mean all the all these shouting out and that was how we were and we we try and still do that kind of atmosphere on stage we we depend a lot on the audience participation and i think that's an overall part of what it is and they don't seem to have that on uh latter day uh, on newer recordings now it's a different technique you know how much fun did you have back in those days dave on a scale of one to ten in terms of fun and hedonism was it brilliant 11 right (laughs) (laughs) it was one it was absolutely wonderful time we couldn't believe that we were in that position you know from from kind of essex boys not really used to anything to suddenly hitting charts going worldwide. I mean, we went all over the world. In fact, we we didn't realise we had a number one hit in South America. We were the first English band actually to go to South America. It, we, we, got, we got out of the airport and we had a reception like the Beatles had. It was fabulous. We toured there about three or four times. It was wonderful. I don't believe everything I read on the internet, but it says that the record company chose you over the Beatles because they wanted somebody in the South and therefore you were it. It was you or the Beatles, they chose you. Is that true? Well, we never really found, we never got to the inside of that one. We, we didn't actually know that they'd auditioned the same time as us, but uh, we were just very grateful that they did pick us over, over the Beatles because I think the Beatles were the best band ever still you know I loved all their stuff they were wonderful but there were similarities weren't they I mean you could you could hear the same thing again with the drums especially there were similarities between the, between the two of you 
I believe there were, yes. The, obviously, their, their accents were slightly different to ours. Maybe that was another reason why Decker picked us, because they couldn't quite understand their voices. <laughs> but uh, we had a wonderful time. It was, it was fabulous for us, you know. I can't remember who said it. Was Paul McCartney the best guitarist in the world, somebody said. And they said, no, he's not even the best guitarist in the Beatles. It's interesting. <laughs> a lot of people said that yeah. they were very lucky. They were just of their time, and it just took off. What yeah. was that era like? Is there any way of describing it and summing it up? Well, I think what it was, it was the era of before that, it had all been solo singers with orchestras, i.e. Frank Sinatra, so on, and suddenly bands were, came, guitar bands, guitar groups came to the fore, and it changed the whole concept of what music was about then, and it became pop music 60s, and we were lucky enough to be involved in those very early days of it, and I, I don't think there'll ever, ever be an era of the 60s again. No, they won't. I don't think we'll be playing Justin Bieber in 45 years' time, do you? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Bob Monkhouse who said, what's the difference between a drummer and a shropodist? Well, a shropodist uh, books up the feet. Um, your job is to keep the whole thing together, isn't it? So in, in terms of your playlist, what was the one song that you'd look forward to that made you show off the most? Um... A very difficult one, really. I don't know. I, I was never a really um, fantastic drummer. I, I was very basic. I never did any drum solo or anything like that. So I suppose, if you would like to say, I suppose, here comes my baby, really, because I kind of started that, you know, on, on the very basic drum pattern and the cowbell, and the boys all come in shouting various different remarks and, and getting the audience clapping, you know. What do you think when you listen to that now? I mean, if you watch that, and it's, of course, in black and white, the, those original videos, does it take you back to a warm place, a wonderful place? Do you wish you were back there, or is it like watching somebody else? No, I... I, I th it was a wonderful time, and I would like to be back there, but unfortunately I know I can't be because I'm too old. And that was a, a special time, which you can't, you can't really bring that one back, but it, it's wonderful. Whenever I see that song, it's wonderful for me, you know. We're talking to Dave Munden today from the Tremolos. He's the track one, CD one of this brand new album, triple album actually called Silence is Golden. That's the title track. It's a beautiful album of all just fabulous, uh, great music. Um, I want to talk to you about the people you've worked with because you've worked with everybody. Who impressed you the most? Um, I would, well, I've got to say probably Roy Orbison. You know, he was, as I said, he was fabulous, a fabulous artist and a, and a true gentleman. A lot of the band's uh, we we actually worked with the Beatles three times in the sixties. We worked with once we had we both had Twist and Shout in the charts at the same time. We worked with them at a place called Ermston, just outside Manchester, on an open air gig, and uh, we did our spot. We went went on before them, obviously. They came on, and they they they, they had this great big sort of furniture van pulled up at the back of the stage. No went and they all jumped out. And we'd never seen anything like that before. And they went on stage and they just tore the place apart. You know, I, I, they were a fabulous band for me. You know, one of the best bands of all time, if not the best band. Can you describe you know? that level of screaming? They tell me that it was so loud in some venues that they didn't even bother playing because you couldn't hear it. Well, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. You just went along and you hoped that your vocals and the drums and everything else was coming out. You just carried on, you know, but the audience were one, wonderful, really noisy, but that's what we loved about it, you know. Was it sex, drugs and sausage rolls? How much fun was the 60s? <laughs> it was, yeah. I mean, although I was the drummer, I actually, because girls used to run and jump on stage and so on, and actually a few times they got back as far as the drums jumped on me as well, so I was quite happy about that. <laughs> I don't think there's ever been a better era for music. Do you see it as a great privilege that you were part of it, or is it just luck, or you don't try and think about it? I think I was very lucky to be involved in, in that kind of situation. Part of it was luck, I suppose, and, and the, the combination of the guys in that we had the band. We were great mates, and we had some great records picked some really good tracks and we were very lucky I think and do you wonder why you I mean your story is interesting as you say it wasn't as if they spotted you as an amazing drummer somewhere else and poached you they literally coached you and brought you up through the band didn't they do you wonder why you because I had uh, I'm a bit of an over the top guy you know I don't um, suffer fools gladly and I say exactly what I what I mean and I think the guys recognised that I was a bit of a 
a different kind of spirit and they needed something like that in the band as well you know as a drum so I was at the back and I, w- I was always making my presence felt very much you know you mentioned something earlier and it's a question I always ask you legends is how have you survived when so many haven't and fell foul to the indulgences of show business what's the key to still being here 50 years later well I think basically for myself I was a, a very normal guy I came from Dagnum in Essex I lived in a council house with mum and dad and I had a very great grounding. And I've times I've, I've gone over the top, but I've always tried to keep quite a level head and, and not let myself get uh, too overawed by my personality and, and my star, star status, if you like. Mm. What is it with the drugs now that seems to bring so many down? I mean, it was different in your day, wasn't it? It seems like it was not as hard as it is today. Yeah, well, the, the kind of things that they bring out now, I mean, I'm not saying that I never indulged in a few illegal substances. We did. I think everybody did, but we knew when enough was enough. You know, we had the presence of mind to think, no, that's that's it. You know, done that, been there, done that, seen it, got the T-shirt. Now that you get on with life, you know. Is there one memory that you've got that just sticks with you forever where you sat there and you were banging those drums and you thought, I've made it, this is it? Probably when we did Sunday night at the London Palladium. Yeah, not quite the same in 2014, is it, that show? No, it's not. No, in actual fact, the dressing rooms were really small backstage, but the fact that we were actually at the London Palladium was fantastic, you know. How do you cope with the pressure of that? I always wonder this. When you're stood on that stage where Bob Hope stood and all those legends, how do you keep your cool so that you don't lose it? You just remain yourself, really. You know, just remain a normal guy and thank you, thank you lucky stars that you're there, being able to perform and and give the audience something, you know, from your own personality and songs. And as for the tremolos, what was the best hit for you? I mean, numbers-wise, I think Sinus's Golden Internationally has got to be the the biggest, but for you, what was your favourite and what do you think is the best song you ever recorded? One of the best songs we ever did was a Bob Dylan song. We we recorded I Shall Be Released. On, we got to about number three. That, that, was a, that was a great song. I, I still like that song very much. We're out of time. Dave Munden, I could talk to you all days. The Tremolos is one of my favourite groups. Silence is Golden has got to be one of the greatest radio songs ever. And if ever I'm feeling a bit down and need to pep up the audience, that certainly is one for it. And I guess that's the greatest tribute I can pay you as an artist to know that DJs love your music, I suppose, is a nice accolade, isn't it? Right, yeah. Thanks very much indeed, Alex. And again, for a legacy that will be played forever. That's a bit creepy, isn't it? To think after you're dead, we'll still be banging out your tunes. Yes, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> this new triple CD is out now. It is wonderful. Um, it's great for in the car as well. Silence is Golden is the new triple CD. Track one is the title track by the Tremolo. Silence is Golden. Dave, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Alex. Pleasure. Thank you very much. Cheers.